So now to start with the firewall settings, we're gonna start doing it with the device, the Security ISD1 MX. So let's start with that Security ISD1. So you can go to Security ISD1, Firewall, that's gonna be the firewall settings. And we can start talking from top to bottom, from left to right. So at the beginning, what it says is the inbound rules. And this inbound traffic will be completely restricted. What does that mean? It means that as a default, every inbound traffic that is reaching out from the upstream or from the internet here in this MX will be blocked and it's going to be denied because there's nothing inside of the MX on the land side that is creating that, you can say, that hole to make the firewall open. So as a default, everything will be blocked unless you specify later on to allow that specific traffic. And if you go to the outbound rules, it means that everything that is going to go outside from the land side you have this default as allowed. It means that it doesn't have any implicit denial rule. As a default, everything will be allowed. If you start sending traffic into real traffic or traffic to the internet, everything will be allowed. If you want to create a deny all, then you have to explicitly create that deny all. Saying deny, this is gonna be the full deny all, put everything deny, anything, anything, and then save it. That's how you should do it for you to have the denied all. And then you put everything on top allowed. There are some people and some companies that they prefer in that way. Deny everything and then just allow the specific rules that they're gonna put on top. If you're not that person and you just want to allow everything except some specific instances to deny traffic, you can do it this way as well. Leave just the default rule allow and then put the ones that you want to deny in specific. Let's do that now. Let's do an example. So in the policy, you have these two options, either deny or allow. That's because of the two things that you can do. Let's say deny and let's put, what do you want? Deny traffic to finance. So you can put finance, deny. That's one. So then you have the different protocols, either TCP, UDP, just ICMP or any. So let's say let's deny any traffic. From the source, these are very good examples for you to understand what you can put. From bottom to top, because that's the first one, the most simple one is just an IP address or a subnet. So that's the IP before. That four is because IP4 and CIDR. So you know what that means. So that's the example. So you can put as a regular firewall, an IP address slash 32, or just a subnet that you know that that's part of that VLAN. You can create an object group or an object that it's a little bit more complicated because you have to create the object first and then we pull that information, that object, and just type it here. And for me to go over to the object, it's going to be a completely independent video because it's going to take a lot of time. But for simplistic way, that's the way. So you can create a subnet and say this is the object, and that way you can replicate and use it as a template in any other firewall rules in this network or other network. So that's what the object uh, is used for. So let's say, let's not put an object. So let's put it simple as possible. Yeah, so let's put an addy.0 slash 24. You see how good it is? So if you do this, they're gonna start telling you, oh no, that's, that's not valid. So ensure that you put it a valid one because they're gonna continuously checking it. The source port, we put any because it's going to be any. Then the destination, you see it has the same options. And there is a new one, which is a domain. So you can use fully qualified domain names for your destination option. You can either use the, the same IP address. So you can say from one VLAN to another VLAN, or this subnet to another subnet, create the objects as before. Or then you can name this object so we can create this object here. We're not going to do it because that's going to take more time and that's going to be another video. So here you can do either create the object in that way or put the subnet or just put an example. So finance, what do you want to deny? Do you want to deny to watch sports, ESPN? Let's do that. So now finance is not able to go to ESPN.com. That's it. So if we click finish editing, we have that. It means that the finance team or that VLAN cannot go to ESPN.com, that domain name, and save the changes. So that's how you create a layer three VLAN. Let's see the gods what they say. This one doesn't apply to any configured local or VPN subnets in the source field of the first firewalls rule. That's a good one. So it means that you're not gonna put just anything willy nilly. So that's the, the beauty of having the dashboard and having all the information of the firewall or the maxes here. 
So it's not you putting any subnets. It's going to calculate and it's going to take a look to all the addressing and VLANs that you already have configured here in the addressing and VLAN section. And if that doesn't match up, it's going to tell you, wait a minute, I don't even have that VLAN. So that traffic shouldn't exist entirely in my network. So that's why you have to put a reliable VLAN address, a VLAN IP address to make it work. So if you see here, now I have 10, 10, 90.0. If we come back here, which is the one that I have? None of those. So that's why it's not working. So let's try the first one, 192.168.1.0. So if I can edit here, like so. If I put this one, let's see if that will allow me to edit it. Let's see if the gods of the dashboard smart. Yeah. So now, so you see, that's what I want to show you. So ensure that what you're doing here, it's going to process it and see if the, is that something that belongs to the other thing at VLANs or any VPN that you have or any static route, but it should be configured somewhere. So it's not going to just give you the whole options to do whatever you want if it's not configured before. So if you see this error message, it's because of that. So if we move on, now the next section is cellular failover rules. So this is going to be applied if you have the 5G or 4G, the built-in cellular modem in your MX. And then what happens is if you have one, one or two ones connection and those fail, and then the whole system and the MX would fail over to the cellular, you can have a specific rules just when the traffic is going to the cellular. I'm going to give a use case. For example, the, the cellular most likely is going to be more expensive and probably it can charge you for the packets or the payload that you're going to use. So if it's more expensive and it's just when everything is down, you can put in more restrictive rules to say nobody's going to watch Netflix, nobody's going to watch YouTube, nobody, because this is going to be like last resort for the really essentials and what is the needed for the business. So you put all these denied rules or you can put the denied explicit at the end and just allow the specific traffic that is necessary for the business. That's what I'm seeing in some use cases for these cellular failovers. So in that way, you put what is truly essential for the business to work to ensure that you don't put all the bandwidth in unnecessary traffic from your users or from your customers. So, and that, that's where you configure. It's the same situation, it's the same way mechanism to configure, so there is nothing new here. If we go over security applying services, you can read that and post the video. But basically, these are the services that is built in into the MX box. You have the ICMP pin. So if you want that the device responds to pins, you put here, yes, allow 20. Or if you want a specific public IP address or remote IP address to touch and talk to the MX, you can put the specific public IP address. You say, let's, and now I'm just going to respond from this specific source pin request. For this, the web is the local status page and the configuration that you can do in the local status page. You can specify saying, I'm not going to allow any remote IP address to access to the local status page. It's going to be accessed just locally. Or you say that this is specific server or this is specific IP address that you know that is just for management that is allowed to access the web for the local status and configuration. We're going to see another video. What, what does that mean? What kind of configuration and local status page is? I'm going to show you later on. So that's basically the two services that you can access from outside for the MX in particular. Not anything of your traffic in the land, just the MX box itself. The next one will be the layer seven. So we have here layer three, and you know what layer three is. So this, remember that is layer three because it's just the destination. It means the IP address. So when you client send a DNA request, that's why it's important that the MEX should capture that DNA request and the response. So it's going to translate that to an IP address, and then it's going to block that, that IP address or the pool of those IP addresses. That's why it's layer three. It's not identified if that is an application that is running SPN.com. It's just the IP address of the resolution of a DNS. Layer seven is different. So I'm not going to explain specifically what layer seven is. But these are the layer seven prior rules. You have the deny, so it's a more simplistic one. You have the deny, you have all the different options. Let's continue with our example as always, productivity. 
And then you can have either all productivity or one specific aspect of the productivity. So you don't have to know the IP address. You don't have to know the domain name. That's why layer seven is very useful. But then you can say, let's just deny for some reason Office 365. And that's how you put it. That's it, nothing else. Just save the changes. The, ch the changes will be safe, and then you have that seven layer, layer seven pool already applied. And that you can see is not coming from source or destination. This is going to be applied to the whole infrastructure, or all the VLANs that you have in, in the advanced VLAN section. So here you cannot say that this is just for one particular subnet. If you want to make it in that way, you will have to go to network wide group policies and then apply group policies to specific clients or VLANs. But if you do it here, in Secure Genesis One Firewall is for everything. And then that's how you configure the firewall settings. So remember, you have the layer three, you have the cellular failover rules, you have the secure appliance services and the layer seven. For this layer three, you can use as well the objects where you can, you can configure here, organization policy objects. We're gonna see another example. This is DNS, people, it's not layer seven, the DNS seven are here. And if you need anything else apart from this, or just one specific group of people, clients, subnets, network-wide group policy, which you're going to see in another video, and then applying to those VLANs, those groups, or those subnets. And that's it. The next video, we're going to see then what is this forwarding rules? Because if this is denied everything, we have to make sure that we can have a way to allow some traffic as well.